Episode 9, Good Night, My Girl. Awakening the Flirting Skills. What? What do you want to do? When she saw Lu Tingxiao suddenly sitting in the passenger seat, Ning Shi clutched the steering wheel with a protective look on her face. Lu Tingxiao leaned back in his seat, and his gaze darkened instantly. What did he want to do? She'd better not know. Lu Tingxiao's body was left with only a white shirt. Roughly, he unbuttoned the collar that was too tight, then the second button, and the third. Ning Shi remained vigilant, keeping her eyes on the man beside her. She noticed him unbuttoning his shirt one button at a time, revealing his well-built chest. She got lost in her thoughts, forgetting even her beloved car, Whitey. Lu Tingxiao didn't notice her gaze. He, with absurd jealousy, which was caused by a car, took out a cigarette and inhaled deeply, exhaling a long plume of smoke. The moment Lu Tingxiao took out a cigarette, Ning Shi couldn't restrain herself any longer. She stared at him without blinking, looking at his moving Adam's apple, at the white cigarette between his lips, at the slowly rising smoke. Her intense gaze from the side was hard to ignore. Lu Tingxiao finally turned his head and saw that she had a craving expression. Lu Tingxiao was momentarily distracted, almost deceived by her gaze. Then he realized that her eyes weren't on him at all. She was craving something, but it wasn't him, it was the cigarette between his lips. Lu Jingli might not be good at anything else, but he excelled in gathering information. In the information he sent regarding Ning Shi's background, from her family to her experiences to her interests, even including small details like her recent attempt to quit smoking. Lu Tingxiao immediately understood that she was having a nicotine craving. She was craving a cigarette, not an old lover, not a car, but a simple cigarette. Lu Tingxiao had never felt so defeated and self-doubting in his life. He had wanted to possess her the moment he saw her, but he had been cautious and considerate, always mindful of her feelings. Yet, at this moment, he had fallen into such a ridiculous situation, jealous of a car and overwhelmed by his own emotions. The saying goes that not being able to forget an old love is because the new love is not good enough. Was he not good enough for her? She had gotten drunk to this extent because of her ex-lover who had abandoned her? He clearly knew that the best approach with her was to take things step by step, and he had been following that principle, but he never expected that, at some point, his rationality would weaken to this extent. Even the smallest, insignificant flame could destroy it all. Lu Tingxiao, with a turbulent mind and a cigarette between his fingers, took a deep drag and exhaled a cloud of smoke. The sight from the side was too strong, and he finally noticed that her gaze was not directed at him. She wasn't craving him, she was craving the cigarette between his lips. Lu Tingxiao asked in a low voice, Do you want one? Ning Shi nodded without hesitation. She was completely lost in the smell of the cigarette, or perhaps, in the allure of the man beside her. Lu Tingxiao flicked the cigarette ash and took another drag. Then, suddenly, he leaned over and pressed his lips onto the girl's lips. Ning Shi's eyes widened as she felt the strong tobacco flavor mix with the man's icy breath that engulfed her. Her lips were gently parted by the softness, and a mouthful of smoke entered with ease. Ning Shi coughed uncontrollably. The cigarette in his hand was now only half left. Lu Tingxiao took another drag, and his gaze rested on the girl who was coughing uncontrollably due to the smoke. She looked even more alluring, tempting his desire for dominance. He asked, Do you want more? Ning Shi, who had been choked by the smoke, glared at the man angrily, giving him a look that said she was dealing with a big bad wolf. Heh. The little expression made Lu Tingxiao burst into a low chuckle. Laughter rippled in his eyes, and he flicked the cigarette butt, exhaling the last puff of smoke. Then, he leaned in again, tilting his head, and pressed his lips against hers. Ning Shi subconsciously tried to escape but was held by a hand on her waist as she attempted to evade. Lu Tingxiao's low, husky voice coaxed by her sensitive ear, this time, I won't make you choke. The moment he finished speaking, a kiss filled with the taste of the cigarette enveloped all her senses. Ning Shi was kissed into a daze, her mind like floating in the clouds. The only thing she was aware of was that this man, who had her locked within his arms, was dangerous, and the cigarette was also dangerous. With a loud bang, the backrest behind her was lowered, and the man's scorching body followed. Her breathing was gradually stolen from her chest. Ning Shi felt her consciousness growing hazier and hazier until she sank completely into the abyss. The little one beneath her suddenly stopped moving and didn't react anymore. Lu Tingxiao exhaled softly and lifted his head to see someone sleeping carefreely, even emitting slight snoring. 
Lu Tingxiao's crimson eyes suddenly turned back to their original dark color. The anger surging within him also dissipated completely. He was going crazy, what was he hurrying for? He had only known this girl for three days. What was he in such a hurry for? This little girl's attraction to him was entirely illogical. When he saw her for the first time in that warehouse at the bar, the moment he held her in his arms, it gave him the illusion that his incomplete life had finally been fulfilled. It was as if she was a treasure he had lost without knowing when. He wanted her to belong to him entirely, and he couldn't wait a moment longer. He didn't want to lose her completely, so he had to wait. Lu Tingxiao took a blanket and a pillow from behind, adjusted the air conditioning temperature, and lay down next to her, kissing her forehead. Good night, my girl. The next morning, Ning Shi woke up in warm arms. She rubbed her eyes and was surprised to see a green canopy of leaves through the sunroof. The morning sunlight flowed down through the gaps in the branches, warming her. She could also hear the pleasant chirping of birds. Where was she? She looked around and was astonished to find that she was sleeping in a car, or more precisely, in Lu Tingxiao's arms. Oh, my god. Ning Shi almost scrambled to sit up, but her head hit the car roof, causing her to grimace in pain. She, Lu Tingxiao, in the car. Damn it, what had happened last night? Why was she in such a ridiculous situation when she woke up? The scene in front of her left no room for misunderstanding. What are you thinking about? Lu Tingxiao asked. Ning Shi bit her finger anxiously, her mind in chaos. She answered, I was thinking, did I really have a drunken one night stand with the big boss in his car last night? It's too terrifying. Big boss. One night stand. If it's as you said, do you think you'd have the energy to jump out of bed so early and have these wild ideas? The man's voice was tinged with irritation. Ah. Ning Shi realized that Lu Tingxiao had woken up without her noticing. She jumped up in a panic, almost banging her head again. Luckily, Lu Tingxiao had anticipated this and protected her head with his big palm. Mr. Lu, call me by my name, Lu Tingxiao's tone was slightly cool. When she hypocritically called him Mr. Lu, she didn't like it. When she called him Sir Xia out of fear, he didn't like it. She wasn't sure if it was just her imagination, but she felt like something about Lu Tingxiao had changed overnight. Or perhaps, it wasn't that he had changed, but that he had hidden it too well, and she had never truly understood him. Ning Shi's gaze unintentionally fell on the deep bite marks on the back of his hand, and she asked, Lu. Lu Tingxiao, what happened to your hand? Lu Tingxiao glanced at the set of tiny tooth marks, his eyes containing a hint of a smile. What do you think? Ning Shi swallowed and said, these bite marks, they look somewhat familiar. Lu Tingxiao showed his approval, you have a good eye. Ah, thank you for the compliment, Ning Shi replied awkwardly and then cautiously asked, did I, bite you? Do you think I'm framing you? You can bite me again to make sure, Lu Tingxiao suggested and extended his hand to her. Ning Shi waved her hands frantically and said, no need, no need, I confess. Can I just confess? By the way, what happened last night? I blacked out, I only remember going to the restroom, and then I have no memory of what happened after that, how did I get back here? You passed out in the women's restroom, so I went in to carry you out, but you didn't want to leave with me, and you bit me. Lu Tingxiao answered succinctly and accurately. Ning Shi's face turned pale. You, you went into the women's restroom. She was truly in deep trouble. The sacrifice for the big boss was too great. Why am I sleeping in the car? Ning Shi continued, gathering her courage. Because you couldn't bear to part with your little darling, Lu Tingxiao said nonchalantly, emphasizing the words, little darling. Ning Shi looked at the car she had long admired and immediately believed Lu Tingxiao's words. I'm really sorry for causing you trouble. Ning Shi apologized weakly. It had only been her second day of staying there, and so much had already happened. She felt terrible. Lu Tingxiao didn't respond to her apology. Instead, he asked an unrelated question, why did you drink so much last night? Ning Shi's face darkened instantly. Seeing her sudden change in expression, the wild beast lurking in Lu Tingxiao's heart gradually revealed itself. Ning Shi wasn't one to share her feelings with others, but maybe keeping these things bottled up was too unbearable. She weakly leaned back on the seat, looking at the green canopy above, and muttered, it seems like the character Meng Changa is going to be written off. Lu Tingxiao's face showed a trace of surprise. What do you mean? It's just a supporting role for a minor female character, but you wouldn't understand, and I doubt anyone else would either, Ning Shi said as she hurriedly covered her eyes. 
Lu Tingxiao's face crossed a touch of astonishment. You're not sad because of Su Yan? Ning Shi was not sad because of Su Yan but because she had lost this role? Lu Tingxiao had been in a bad mood the whole night, but when he saw the girl looking upset, he couldn't help but worry even more. How could he not understand how much she valued her dreams? Otherwise, she wouldn't have taken the difficult path step by step, refusing to take shortcuts when she could. Don't be sad. You've done well, Lu Tingxiao said as he gently placed his hand on her head and leaned it against his chest. The main culprit was not Su Yan, but Ning Yaohua. Ning Yaohua was the largest investor in the TV series, Tian Xia, and had the authority to dismiss actors. Even if the girl had been bullied by her biological father, she couldn't do anything about it. Ning Shi realized that she had actually cried in Lu Tingxiao's arms for almost half an hour after her emotions had calmed down. This was truly, unbelievable. Apart from situations that required acting in front of the camera, it had probably been at least five years since she had last shed tears. Ah, I'm sorry. I've stained your clothes. Ning Shi looked at Lu Tingxiao's shirt, which had been soaked by her tears, with embarrassment. Lu Tingxiao's lips curled up slightly. It's my honor. Ning Shi stood still, her heart racing, completely stunned. She had always thought that Lu Tingxiao was one of those high IQ, low EQ geniuses. Never in her wildest dreams did she imagine that the big boss could flirt so effortlessly. Jealousy. She could even flirt back. Lu Tingxiao reached out naturally and smoothed her slightly disheveled hair. What do you plan to do next? Find a big thigh to hug. Ning Shi blinked her eyes and looked puzzled. Huh? Find what big thigh? Last night, you said you wanted to find a big, muscular thigh to hug and complained that mine wasn't thick enough. Lu Tingxiao looked at her meaningfully. Ning Shi almost choked on her own saliva. What on earth had happened last night? Mr. Lu, please don't take my nonsense seriously. I was completely drunk and didn't know what I was saying. Your thighs are obviously the thickest in the whole city. Ning Shi flattered, but she suddenly felt like her words might carry some ambiguity. Lu Tingxiao was in a good mood from the flattery. His eyes held a hint of amusement. Then why didn't you hug them? E, e, e? Ning Shi struggled to find an answer. Lu Tingxiao ruffled her hair, sparing her from further embarrassment. All right, I won't tease you anymore. Get off the car and go back to your room to rest. You need to be well rested to face difficulties. Or do you want to spend more time with your little darling? No, no, I'll go back to the room. Ning Shi was eager to get off the car. After getting off the car, Lu Tingxiao stood by the door and suddenly stopped. Ning Shi scratched her head. What's wrong? Lu Tingxiao took a big stride and headed toward a bush. Ning Shi followed him and saw Lu Jingli lying in the bushes, snoring loudly, hugging a camera. She knew that under the Xingxia Entertainment umbrella, there were not only the talent agency but also more than 300 media outlets, with Lu Jingli being the head of the paparazzi. But wasn't this guy a little too much? He didn't even spare his own brother's gossip. Ning Shi raised an eyebrow. Should we wake him up? Sleeping like this in the bushes, won't he catch a cold? Lu Tingxiao nodded and gave Lu Jingli a swift kick. Lu Jingli woke up with a loud shout, this is outrageous. Why is the car window so unscientific? I tried everything, but I still couldn't see inside. Lu Tingxiao, looking down at his little brother, said, come to my study later, I have something to tell you. All right, Lu Jingli rubbed his eyes, slapped the dust off himself, and stood up. His gaze kept moving between the two of them as he mumbled, why didn't the car shake? Did I miss it? It's impossible. With my brother's stamina, it would take at least a whole night. Ning Shi asked with a deadpan expression, why do you know so much about your brother's stamina and duration? Lu Jingli scratched his head. Because he always pummeled me all night. All right, you win. Back in the guest room that Lu Tingxiao had prepared for her, Ning Shi was completely speechless. In just half a day and one night, he had actually redecorated all the guest rooms from their original clean and crisp, cold color tones to a warm and cozy atmosphere. Not only that, the closet was filled with clothes, all in her size, ranging from pajamas to casual wear to evening dresses, as well as top-of-the-line limited edition accessories and handbags. This was extravagant beyond belief. How is it? Are you satisfied? Lu Tingxiao stood behind her. Ning Shi held her forehead. It's not a matter of satisfaction. Then what is it? Mr. Lu, call me by my name. Okay, Lu Tingxiao, don't you think you're being too good to me? She couldn't even think straight. 
You finally realize that I'm being good to you. Lu Tingxiao wore an expression as if he were educating a child. Seeing the conflicted look on the girl's face, Lu Tingxiao's eyes dimmed for a moment, but quickly returned to normal. You saved little treasure, and he may need your help for a long time. Is there a problem with me being kind to you? At this point, Lu Tingxiao paused and looked at her. Or maybe you'd prefer a different way of repaying me. So, it was all a misunderstanding on her part. Ningxi's heart finally relaxed, and she quickly waved her hand. No, no, this is fine, it's all good. She decided to let go of the idea of different ways of repayment. Lu Tingxiao was a person from a completely different world than her. If he found out about her dirty past, he might not even allow her to see little treasure again. It's still early. Rest for a while, and we'll have breakfast downstairs later. Okay. After Lu Tingxiao left, Ningxi lay on the comfortable bed but couldn't sleep. How could she sleep when she was waiting for potentially bad news? Were the directors satisfied with her performance, and could it withstand the pressure from the investors? She couldn't just sit around and wait. Ningxi turned to her side, grabbed her laptop, and logged into her messaging app. Lonely and miserable whispers, are you there? Letcher King, hey, why is Ning Superstar contacting me first? What's going on? Lonely and miserable whispers, do you have money? Can you lend me 8 million? Letcher King, what's going on? Lonely and miserable whispers, can you not ask for the reason? Letcher King, I just invested in a winery, it might take a bit of time. Lonely and miserable whispers, how long? Letcher King, 3 days. Lonely and miserable whispers, thank you. Letcher King, heh, my dear, this is the first time you've asked me for something. Lonely and miserable whispers, when are you coming back to China? I'll pick you up. Letcher King, Ningxi, you're really ruthless. Ningxi looked at the darkened profile picture of the Letcher King and felt a sense of unease. If it wasn't absolutely necessary, she didn't want to owe anyone any favors, especially someone she had been involved with in the past. She knew that this exchange would hurt the other party's feelings, but she had no choice. Emotions were something she no longer had or wanted. As for why she didn't ask Lu Tingxiao for the money, she was already deeply involved with the Lu family, and she didn't want to get any more entangled, especially when it came to money. An hour later, Ningxi finally received a call. It was from Chongli. Ningxi clenched her palm and took a deep breath before answering. Hello? Remember, we start shooting at 9 in the morning. You'll have to take a cab over, I'm busy taking care of Shuelua and don't have time for you. You've got a lot of talent anyway, so I'm not worried about you. Chong Li's tone was as sharp as ever, but today she seemed particularly annoyed, as if Ning Shi owed her 8 million. What? We start shooting? Ning Shi was momentarily stunned. Are you half asleep? Hurry up, you can't be late on the first day. Chong Li sounded impatient and hung up the phone directly. Ning Shi held her phone, her mind in a whirl. What was going on? Was she not being replaced after all? Ningxi jumped out of bed and paced around the room. She finally called the director. Hello, Director Gua, I'm sorry to bother you so early, but I have something I'd like to ask you. Are you calling to ask if Director Ning is planning to replace you?